Hey, it's Thomas here, and today we're doing a quick review on Dr. Tim's one and only nitrifying bacteria. If you want to be able to add your first few fish to your newly set up tank right away, or follow very clear and easy directions for a fish list cycle so you can add livestock to your tank when it's ready to support many fish all at once, backed by the proven and trusted scientific research of microbiologist Dr. Tim, then what you're after is one and only nitrifying bacteria. Also, I'm going to give you some tips on how you can get that bacteria to grow more rapidly with some very easy tweaks. One of the very first steps to setting up your new tank is to establish a healthy population of nitrifying bacteria to convert harmful ammonia to much less harmful nitrate. This is known as cycling your aquarium and once complete will prevent your tank from building up with ammonia caused by your fish eating and pooping and respirating and generally making waste. That waste is converted from ammonia to nitrite to nitrate, which is way safer. Whether you're using dry rock and sand, live rock, or partially live rock and sand seeded with dormant bacteria, starting your cycle with a bottle of live nitrifying bacteria can make a world of difference by instantly providing your tank with a population of active nitrifying bacteria from day one of setup. Dr. Tim's One and Only is a blend of live nitrifying bacteria that have been identified, isolated, and selected by Dr. Tim himself specifically for life in our aquariums. It's widely used by public aquariums, professionals, and hobbyists to either instantly provide a newly set up tank with enough beneficial bacteria to support the first few fish going in so that you don't have to wait weeks before adding some livestock, or for easy fishless cycling when paired with Dr. Tim's ammonium chloride. Before adding one and only to your tank, you'll want to give the bottle a good shake to loosen up the particles inside, and when you pour it into the tank, it should look cloudy. The cloudiness that you're seeing is actually the micro substrate that the bacteria is grown on, and it will clear up very quickly as it settles in the tank. I put my pumps on feed mode while adding it to the tank so that it can sink to the bottom of the tank easily. It's also important to turn off your skimmer, UV sterilizer, ozone generator, and remove mechanical filtration like filter socks prior to adding the bacteria so that it isn't removed before it gets a chance to become established in the tank. Next, you get to go get your pair of clownfish or hardy fish of choice and add them to the tank. Just bear in mind, for the first few weeks, you don't want to overfeed or add any new fish, giving the bacteria that's in there a chance to you know, settle down, multiply, and create that stable population that's gonna be able to support more fish. If you prefer to do a fishless cycle like I'm gonna be doing, this is what you're gonna need. Dr. Tim's one and only, get at least as much as you need. It's basically impossible to overdose, so more is better than not enough. For example, if you have a 100 gallon tank, get the bottle for 120 gallons. Dr. Tim's ammonium chloride, it's super inexpensive at just a few bucks and comes with a convenient dropper cap and an ammonia and nitrite test kit. pH and nitrate are also great to have on hand. I'm gonna be using my Senai to track the ammonia, NH3 and NH4, but we'll be using a Red Sea test kit to track nitrite, nitrate, and pH. Dr. Tim's has an easy to follow guide on how to perform a fishless cycle for your tank using their ammonium chloride, and even provides you with a sheet that you can print off, follow, and record your test results on, which is really convenient, especially if it's your first time doing a fishless cycle. The whole process is broken down into simple steps of dosing ammonium chloride and then testing ammonia and nitrite, and it typically takes around 14 days or less instead of weeks to fully cycle your aquarium, and at the end, your tank will be ready to support a more moderate bioload of fish, inverts, and even your first few easy corals like softies. Now, with that said, when it comes to more difficult or sensitive species like Acropora or other SPS, for example, I would definitely give the tank more time maybe a few months to mature before putting those corals in the tank. There's a lot more going on than just the cycle that needs to kind of settle out before those kinds of corals really get comfortable and take off. So yeah, limitations, but still a massive head start. I'm sure you've already guessed it. I'm gonna be cycling the tank you can see behind me, fishless using one and only an ammonium chloride. One really big draw of ammonium chloride for me personally is that it's going to avoid the cloudy and smelly stage that can happen when using something like a piece of raw market shrimp as an ammonia source for a fishless cycle. And because adding drops of ammonium chloride is controlled and measured, I run virtually no risk of stalling my cycle with too much ammonia or nitrite, which is harder to avoid with a chunk of rotting meat in the tank. 
I also really like the idea of being able to add the bulk of the fish that I want to keep in this tank all at once. That way all my utilitarian fish can go in. I don't have to worry so much about algae at the beginning. And also if I plan to add any more aggressive fish in the future that, you know, typically don't like newcomers, thinking like royal grandmas, dotty back, stuff like that, uh, you know, I can just add them a little bit later and not have to wait, you know, forever. It's faster. And like I promised, here are a few great tips from Dr. Tim's research that will help expedite the growth of beneficial bacteria during that fishless cycle. Keep your salinity around 18 to 20 parts per thousand, and then you can increase it to the typical 35 parts per thousand over two to four days once the cycle's complete and you're ready to add your fish. Raise the temperature of your tank to between 80 and 84 degrees Fahrenheit while you're fishless cycling. You can drop it back down to 76 to 78 over the course of a few days once your cycle's complete. And a tank with substrate is much easier to cycle than a bare bottom tank. Not to say you can't go bare bottom, just substrate provides a vast surface area for the bacteria to colonize right away. Rock in the tank is good too, but it's just not able to provide the same surface area as that substrate. Now, if you're like me and you want to know everything about what's inside this bottle, you know, exactly what bacteria it is, what it's going to convert first, how it does it, how salinity changes are going to affect it, temperature changes, you know, whether or not you can use freshwater bacteria for a saltwater tank if you've already got some on hand. Dr. Tim has an amazing presentation where he goes deep down that cycling rabbit hole, tells you everything you need to know on it right here. It's, it's incredible. Great Magna presentation. I've literally watched it two or three times. Change the way I looked at cycling a tank. Check it out.